Greetings, humans. <laughs> so um, today is a is a busy day. Um, I have been uh, upgrading the Die Warriors um, store, uh, moving the instruction videos that, that or not videos but instruction PDF files that uh, we have on Google Drive to be hosted directly on the store itself. And um, so I'm moving things around there. I've also been uh, preparing some new stuff for 3D printing for the VSS. And um, I also wanted to give a little follow-up about the stuff that from yesterday. Um, yesterday I printed, well, took more than just yesterday, but I finally got um, six of these beams done. And um, they are they are going to be used for the VSS for the engine part. I went ahead and just added a, a, a simple primer coat on some wood. And uh, these uh, beams are going to be supporting the wood areas pretty much like this. And of course, I'll, I'll be using other, um, you know, the, uh, the engine part is going to be much longer. So these beams are going to be in each of these set of holes here, as well as on the other side over here. So you'll have uh, you know, beams uh, on these holes right here on the other side. And uh, this beam is going to be supporting that. So a total of six beams for the port side and the starboard side of the floor. And that's just for two sets of these uh, wooden floor uh, tiles. I have to do another set. So it's got to be an, an additional six. So a total of 12 just for the floor. The ceiling is also going to have the same uh, beam supporting um, a, a ceiling is just going to be the same structures, the same uh, wood stuff, but just done for the ceiling instead of the floor. So an additional 12. What I'm going to do today with, uh, with this is, so I have a beam. I have to prepare uh, two more beams. One is going to be uh, a small one. It's going to be 3D printed. And the other one is going to be longer to, uh, to span this set of floors with the, the, the other set of floors. So it'll be much longer and uh, I gotta prepare that. And then I'm going to send those directly to the printer. So you'll get to see that in action. Um, so I'm gonna be doing some CAD stuff and then I'm gonna be uh, loading the, the, the files into the software that gets it to the printer. Um, on other things too, the Die Warrior store is getting updated with uh, instruction. Um, I, I keep wanting to say instruction videos, but uh, these are PDF files for doing different types of um, props that we have that are kind of complicated. And um, so I've been this morning. I've been just moving things around, and so things like the watertight doors the battlefield uh sentry drones and a few other items they have instruction pdf files but they're uh, stored on google drive and i did some tests today and accessing the google drive stuff and yeah you have to be signed into a google account in order to access them so i wasn't currently signed in and i clicked on the PDF link it took from the Die Warrior store it took me to the Google Drive and then it just sat there with the little circle thing saying that it was currently downloading and it, it remained like that for like 20 minutes so um, I was able to do a, a bit of research and I just got to the conclusion that I can easily store the instruction files PDFs in the, the, the Die Warrior store directly 
So I, was, I started the process for that. So there's a, a, a few people out there with orders that they just received with instruction of the PDF stuff. It's not included in their in their, their orders. So I sent out an email to people letting them know that the um, instruction PDFs are going to be moving directly to the Die War store. So, um, so I was in the process of that. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. Also, also uh, other little topics too. I've been looking into uh, things like you know Parler and and Minds.com, and um, I don't know my way around Minds in particular. And uh, I don't use Twitter or anything like that. Um, but it comes to keeping things updated on like Instagram and Twitter and things like that, I let other people handle that. In particular, let my wife handle that. And uh, so with me, um, I'm currently looking into Minds.com, not to replace Facebook, but simply to be another uh, avenue of presence. So I'm trying to see what, what it takes to update both Facebook, Die Warrior Store, and Minds.com, Die Warrior Store, at the same time. So things like, um, for example, streaming live video. I'm doing directly right now to YouTube, my main uh, Facebook account, and then the Die Warriors store account. So I'm doing all of that at, at the same time. So I'm looking to see how can I can I can easily do that also for Minds.com. So um, just kind of learning my way through through Minds and um, you know, so just learning right now. But anyway, just let y'all know that if you are active in Minds or some other uh, group, um, you'll be, you know, hopefully you'll be seeing more of us uh, active in those platforms as well. But we're not leaving Facebook or anything like that. So, you know. um, okay. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the comments are visible. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to um, the Die Warrior Store right now. I believe I'm currently streaming the Die Warrior Store website. Ah, yeah, there it is. Um, don't know what's kind of narrow, but uh, let's see if I move this, make this smaller. Does this update better? Uh, yeah, let's try this. Yeah, a little bit better, a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'll try to keep all the windows about this this size. Uh, so anyway, here's the Die Warrior store. If you don't know, you should know, because it's a good place to be. <laughs> Actually, uh, I need to update the. Uh, the picture area in the news section today and I'll be doing that before switching gears So, you know if you're curious about what goes on in my typical day. This is it really um, I've been updating this the, the blog a bit and uh, So I haven't updated since uh, since 31st, so I'm going to be updating that uh I have new blog stuff that's, um, how you call it, that's pending. They're behind the scenes kind of thing. So you can type up the blog, for example, and then when you're ready to publish, you just click the button to publish and it gets updated. I got several of those going on. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, you know, follow up on the PDFs. The next one I'm doing is um, for the uh, gyro stabilized system stuff. To give you an idea, the Battlefield Sentry drone, if you scroll down to assembly, it's right there, the, the new PDF. And so far on mine, it doesn't seem to be taking too long to load. So. The other thing too is this is the, the, the 
newer format for the instruction videos. The watertight door, the, uh, the bridge hatch, and other items that require assembly, I'm going to give it all an, uh, an updated makeover, really. It, it'll be more like the way this format is. And uh, so I, I, I'm going to work on that. And let me just show you why. Because the watertight door, I was looking at that earlier. Uh, where's the watertight door? VSS. The watertight door is here. And I was looking at it. It's friendly for printing on the paper, but not for looking on the screen. Um, so this is okay. this part's okay, but you know, it's it's made to be like on a folded page. So it's, you know, so it's you got you know that kind of structure. So I'm going to update all of that. I don't like these jaggy lines that appear. So I'm going to make everything um, look better, more updated. So that was it. So I'll I'll be uh, changing this as well. I think I need to do uh, the hatch also. Yeah, the hatch needs uh, an assembly guide. So so I'll be upla updating that also around the same time. Uh, they take a lot of pictures, so I'll be doing a lot of screenshots, that kind of thing. Um, so the next thing I'm working on is the complete kits, the gyro stabilized system. This one does not have any, so I got to look for that in my files. Um, Let's see, where would that be in my, on my network? So I have a, a network where I keep uh, the files located. And so they're not on the local machines. So I have to like, you know, and I keep things updated on multiple systems. Um, is it's vehicles? Let me go. I bet you it's listed under, under weapons. Let me go to props. Weapons, 118 scale, and what is it? You know, I just let's see, browse gyro cams. Okay, there it is. Okay, assembly guide. Good. Oh, I have a PDF for it. Okay, good. So I'm going to copy the path. Copy. I'm going to go to, I got to go to a different window that's here. I don't think you'll be able to see this. No. So I'm going to go ahead and update this real fast. Um, oh, I guess I got to click save. Okay. Uh, I gotta go back. Gotta type in gyro. A gyro stabilized system. Save and view. Okay, now I'm in the page. Clicking on the tab, going to do the, the file thing. Click here to upload. Okay, let me um, let me just simply drag and drop. So, upload files, drag and drop. So let me uh, also get rid of this. 
assembly instructions are not available at the moment. Yes, they are. Now they are. Um, let's see. Assembly guide. It's in the PDF format. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. save that so then when i switch to the view i just i'm going to refresh the page and there it is let's take a look at it hey there it is uh weapon systems okay yeah so that's it Okay, now um, uh, I think I need to do, and I'm just going to quickly take a look, and then I'm going to switch gears. Um, quickly take a look at the VSS uh, stuff. Because uh, a number of you guys are ordering the, the bridge kits. Let me just get into any of them. Oh, and also that one. Okay, I need to update this. This is when when it's like this, just plain. It's going to go to um, to Google Drive, and I don't like the way Google Drive is taking its time with it. And you have to do sign in and all that. Even when you sign in, it takes time to load up. So I'm going to change the BSS Assembly Guide page to a PDF hosted directly on here. And uh, so what I'll do first is uh, just take the PDFs as is, and I'll upload them. And I'll go back later, maybe later this week, not tomorrow, but maybe Thursday, I'll start to upgrade the, the PDF instructions so things are, you know, newer, have a newer look, newer format, and, um, and more consistent being, you know, with the new stuff. I don't think the um, the black consoles have an assembly guide. No, it's the same assembly. It's just the link is not there. So I'll be, you know, obviously adding the link to that. Uh, one more. Take a look at uh, probably under command consoles right there. Uh, so I, okay, take a look at both. I don't think any of them have. No. So I'll update that because there's a few orders out there. It's already been delivered. They need an uh, instruction video. Uh, that instruction video. I used to do instruction videos. So I need to, to do the assembly guides, uh, PDFs. And also, for this too so i'll i'll um update that and i suppose i'll need to also update the the stuff for repl the replacement um displays where do i keep the, the replacement displays <laughs> so uh, uh, i'm lost in my own store site <laughs> So, uh, add on parts from the parts. Okay. Okay. So I need to do um, the replacements, uh, a PDF with the replacement stuff as well. In other words, the same stuff that I cover in the video, I'll just put it into picture form. Okay. Um, one last thing before I close this, I'm going to update the news. Uh, and no comments yet? Yeah, in the comment section. Okay. So let me just go ahead and uh, get out of this. Mm, 
how do I do the update uh, for the, the website itself? Okay, edit website. You know, with I like using Weebly for um for the store, and they've been pretty good on keeping the the site updated. Uh, but sometimes they they update and they don't tell you. Or at least I don't look to see if they tell. And uh, so I go in, it's like, okay, well, the, the format has changed. The layout has changed. Yeah, so let's see. News about conspiracy. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll put just mentioning the news in the news section on the very front of the page that the... Uh, I wonder, can you all see see as it goes live? I mean, as I type things, can does the does the the page update? So I'm just going to add information about the assembly guides. Um, the assembly guides. Moving. Let's see, assembly guides are being upgraded. Being updated. Please look. I'm saying assembly guides are being updated. New PDFs and new locations. Please look in the tab, in the assembly tab. In a point for each problem. Please look in the assembly tab for each prop, in each prop. Please look at the assembly tab. Maybe please, please find in the assembly tab. Maybe check out this, uh, let's see, yeah, check out the assembly tab. Okay. Maybe I should highlight this in a different color. Uh, yeah. Green. Kind of hard to see. Uh, red with a yellow background. Ah, uh, well, maybe make it bold. Yeah, a little bit better, easier to see. Okay. Mm, that's the latest news. Um, I don't have any new pictures to show to update the, the carousel. So I'll go, uh, I'm curious. If I go this, I guess I have to update that. So I guess I have to actually refresh then. No, I guess I have to click publish. Okay, usually I just go through the motions, you know, click publish, things like that, and then I go to the page to refresh and take a look. But, but the thing is that sometimes I will make a change in, let's say, a, a prop page, um, I add some new wording or, or, or put a picture, and then I switch 
to a different tab to take a look at the finished result and it's already updated. So some things get automatically updated, other things I have to click like publish or you know make live or something like that. So okay there it is there's the new stuff right there. Okay um so the carousel parts are uh, going to be changing, um, updating, really. Uh, let's go to the previous. There was something here. Can I? Okay. These consoles with the, the brushed aluminum, I am going to get back to it and make these available on the store. I have an idea on, on changing the, uh, the display part to make it a little bit more consistent with the other displays that we have. Um, I, I'm going to be needing to print more of these uh, pretty soon. And uh, everyone likes the, the blue barrels. Uh, I have some white ones. I got orange ones and I got yellow ones. So um, yellow ones don't look bad either. And uh, But everyone loves the blue ones. So I'm going to have to print more blue. And, uh, yeah, uh, I need to uh, take more pictures, really, of, of this. This is, you know, there's some, some new stuff to, to put. Yeah, I like, I really like these uh, displays. So, so far, everyone's been, uh, who, who's been ordering them has been getting uh, this piece here with, uh, can you see the mouse? Does my mouse move? Let's see. I'll move this out of the way. Yeah, okay, so you can see my mouse. So this part here with uh, the keyboard area, it's empty in the picture, but everyone that's been uh, been buying these, I've been adding uh, the little uh, green acrylic piece there to help finish things off. Uh, The VSS is a fantastic uh, platform to do customizations. I am currently uh, in the process of refining the, the weapons. This, and I have a whole bunch of little bitty turrets that's also being designed. So the VSS is going to have some serious teeth. I do have some harpoon uh, systems. Uh, I got some incomplete ones right here. You can see some of the harpoon barrels right, right here. And, uh, you know, so it'll be like, like, you know, big. So anyway, you can get the harpoon system. I'm thinking for those who just want the barrels and, you know, the, the launch tubes to just make those available as well. So if you don't want to do the harpoon thing with uh, the rest of the harpoon um, structure, you want to do your own, I will happily make these available. Uh, also, I got other stuff. Anti-ballistic uh, missile lasers. So let me just click this a little bit more so you can see more. Uh, well, the white doesn't do so great. Let me... Uh, uh, maybe between me, I have some in the gray. I have some in the gray. Uh, well, they're somewhere. So, um, uh, I thought I had at least one in in the in a gray available, but I guess I have it elsewhere. Yeah, it must be elsewhere. So um, here's an anti-ballistic missile uh, laser piece. It's kind of incomplete, and you can't really see with the glare, so maybe it can, but it's full of details. 
it's one of these props that, that I have the most details of done on it. And uh, you know, so it's got areas where you can attach um, tubing, ho hoses, power, cables, something like that. Um, I'm currently working on the uh, the side thing so it can it can stand on its own and then pivot. I'm trying to I'm trying to cut co uh, cover the the glare because you can't see the details with the glare or well, with my hand. So let me just change it like this. So this is going to be available very very soon. Um. Uh, so oh, let's see. So I got that in the works. And for those who are curious about the the harpoon system, it's a nice big thing here, standing next to a figure at the same level. Get an idea of the, of the scale you know it's not just uh some sort of tube you know it's got details on things so you don't have to, you know even these things you know i take a lot of time and effort to make parts as awesome as i can you know it's i suppose if you don't really care about the, you know, about your product you could just put like pvc pipes or something like that and uh you know or just make parts that don't have much detail but uh, I try to make uh, everything as um, as valuable as as I can do it so in other words I put a lot of effort in the details because I figure if I'm going to make these things available for people to, to buy and display on their dioramas people are going to want to have like the best they can, they can possibly get and um and i want to you know to make these things you know very good the best that i can actually do and then print them with the, the best that i can do with these machines so i use as as many tools as i can to and many techniques that i can to to make everything come out extremely good as best as i can and uh because i'm also thinking like if i'm going to, to to sell these you know well would i want to to build it for myself will i want to have it on my on my uh vss for example you know I, I, if i go to some place like joe fest and i bring the vss with me i don't want to show you know hey i cut corners you know that kind of thing i want to show you know this is the you know for the price this is a, a, ve a very good, well done piece, you know, and if you want to make it even uh, nicer and better, you know, it's, as it's made with materials that you can easily cut, you can easily sand, you can easily paint. And, um, you know, and basically using as many plastics as I can that are not toxic, you know, PLA is supposed to be very, very safe. Um, yeah, you know, there are some some ABS stuff, you know, it's, it's like Lego, you know, that's ABS there. And, uh, but for the most part, you know, try to keep things safe, try to keep things um, highly detailed and something that I myself will feel pride when I assemble and then show the world, you know. So, um, so that's this. And uh, what else? Oh, well, that's all I can show there. So, okay. Um, so, moving on. Hmm, getting a little warm. Move to on the fan. So, what I need to do next is um, 
is update the the beams for the VSS so I can begin printing on this machine. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen here. Stop screen. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and close that on the browser. Browser tab. And close it here too. And uh, I'm going to refresh this. Okay, I need two, three views. Okay, I'm going to minimize this. Oh, I'm sorry, I got a little sidetracked. I was just, I just noticed I, I put like um, a test comment on minds.com and I got three views. So I'm just rereading what I what I posted and just kind of thinking about it. Uh, I need to come to uh, here. Say share screen, and I'm going to choose an application window. SolidWorks share. Okay, so. You guys should be able to see SolidWorks stuff right now. And I will um, switch to uh, I need to get out of this from props. I need to switch to the VSS folder. there I need to go to the engine um, folder okay now I'm going to look for the ones I need to update I want to begin uh, uh, printing this big one engine engine beam one so I'm going to load that in and uh, Gonna switch this. It's loading. Okay. What I'm gonna do with this is that all I need to do with this is uh, I need to make a little uh, notch, probably here, here, or something like that. Maybe, maybe along the middle. Uh, a little area where I could put my knife in between the print because it's going to print on this surface let me uh let me switch to solid so I'm, I'm going to put my knife to um I mean yeah so it's going to print on in, on this surface here first so in, in other words it's going to print upside down and so I need to put a my knife to well I'm jumping around the whole time I need to put a notch maybe around here or here someplace where it'll eat it'll be easier if i can put my knife between the print and the build plate and pop this part off because what happens is that sometimes like if you don't use a raft or something like that sometimes a part can be printed very very close to the build plate that it makes us very very good adhesion and then when you do sometimes I use hairspray to kind of secure parts down I haven't had the need to use hairspray in a while 
because what happens is you, you, if you have enough hairspray that has built up over time and you have enough uh, prints that has uh, been printed on it and you know and removed eventually you'll get like little uh, pieces of material left and it's not enough to damage the print nothing like that but the but the bill plate is no longer perfectly smooth it's so it's a little bit more rough now and so what happens is that it makes very very good adhesion so you know much more than simply having a new build plate and you print something on it it will print very well you know it will stick very well but after a while when you have like a lot of you know a bit of a residue buildup that residue buildup helps secure pieces in in place at least that's what I find find on this machine and on these small machines here. And after a while, I don't need to do anything to prepare the build plate. I just print on what's been done already. And after like five or so prints, I find myself with my knife or, or a chisel really trying to twist and get the parts out. And it's it really wants to to really stick. It doesn't want to let go. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, quickly add a piece here. Where would be a good place to put this? I'm just going to go. Um, somewhere in the middle. Actually, I should, should, should just do it right here, here, to here. Delete this. So this way I could do a mirror. And somewhere here is going to be the middle. So I'll go right up to there. And I'm going to just say... Um, Offset three millimeters is good, so I'm going to go 1.5 bi directional, so it goes both sides. So you don't look like this. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, that's good. So I'll click that, close it off here. And then from, from there, I'm just going to say, I don't want to select chain. I don't want bi-directional. I would say, just go ahead and make it uh, do three millimeters deep. Yeah, so three millimeters deep would be enough. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, maybe four millimeters wide. So trim this off, trim the, the excess. Uh, so we can see the numbers. So I'm going to make this side two millimeters. And this side two millimeters. So it's a total of four. So, and then I need to, to cut this around, uh, you know, mirror the thing. So mirror along here. center line yeah this let's do the whole thing mirror along this line okay and just for fun I'm going to go ahead and something went on Power fluctuated just now. But what was strange is that I heard like a like some sort of growl, you know, like like a, like a 
like something wasn't wasn't on with full power. That was weird. I'll have to take a look and investigate. The UPS is on at the moment. Computer, turn off figure display. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. The UPS was on, uh, the battery backup, and uh, it, it was just saying I had full battery, but it was showing something else too, and then it was on the countdown, so. I don't know what was going on there. I'm going to go ahead and maybe, I'm not sure about this, but I'm going to put a couple, uh, one here, one here, little tab. It's probably not quite necessary. Actually, I should make this deeper. Maybe, uh, let me take this set of three millimeters. Let's just make it again. Let's just make it four. Actually, well, yeah, let's just make it four. Maybe this is too much. So I will copy this. Paste it, rotate it. I'm just going to see how this one looks. I'm not quite sure if this is needed way in the front. Probably is not needed. So maybe I'll just, once I mirror it, maybe I'll suppress it so it's not shown. And features. Once I get this done, I will... Uh, prepare the 3d print so how deep do we want to make this cut so let's say actually 1.5 millimeters no we need to make it very deep how about here uh it's almost it's not good for those so it'll be at the edge um i will not keep these because it's just too close it's like half a millimeter to the top of that surface which if i put a knife in there to try to twist and get this thing off it's just gonna make a hole it's just too thin so let me just suppress those then take oh, i don't want to take everything just take this Well, not suppress, but make it into a construction line. Because construction lines are not rendered. They're just there. Just make sure, yeah. So all these dashed lines, like you see here, all that is a construction line. All these dashes. Including there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and keep this. And just give it a little bit of strength. I'm just going to round the corners some. 0 0.25. This helps it print a little bit cleaner at the edge. And no, instead then we do this. Good. It did it on the back. Uh, oh, and one more. I guess I could do it on the same. It's not to have any 90 degree corners. I'll 
do the same for this. Okay, done. So now I will save it as a STL. So this is how this part looks. So let me go ahead and save it first. Save. Okay. Now I will save it as an STL file, save as. STL. CR10 S Pro. STL. Engine beam 1 1. Okay, that's good enough. Save. Oh, you know, I, I put in the wrong folder. <laughs> so, yeah, you get to see me make mistakes. So, let me now, um, let me just quickly move that file from the STL. I mean, from, yeah, let me, let me move that STL out of the way. Cut. Go back one folder up. Paste. Okay, now I'm going to share uh, the um, the software for the printer, which is Cura. So let me say share screen, share screen, application window, Ultimaker Cura. Cura does a nice freebie um, service to the to the three D print printing community. They have uh, their software uh, that they up, upgrade fairly often, so it's always updated. And it's um, this is for the mini and this, and it's because it's free and stuff. It's and they do upgrade everything. It's a pretty good uh, program for laying out your STLs, get them ready for three D printing. And uh, what I like about it is I could use it on my um, my big printers as well as the little printers, and even uh, you know printers is not really designed for. So let me go ahead and drag and drop the. Um, I keep pressing the wrong thing. Let me go ahead and drag and drop the file. Boom, right there, into Cura. So now I'm going to go ahead and just rotate it, select it. Rotate it, 90 degrees. Just move it around, let's say right about here, so it's a little bit easy for me to, to get, get to, maybe right about there. Uh, yeah, maybe right up there. And I'm just going to keep uh, standard stuff. Let's say, let's go to preview. Oh, nothing previewed yet. Go there. So it's doing a slicing piece, and then it's going to show how it looks previewed. Okay, this is how it looks previewed. Um, so take a look how it is zoomed up. So these parts are not going to be 100% solid. They will have a pattern on the inside. So it's going to take five hours, 44 minutes to do one of these beams. So this is pretty much the way it's going to be printing. Other software will show you like the path it takes 
and uh, things like that. But what's this? No, don't know. So okay, it'll take five hours. Eight point nine six meters, twenty seven grams, I guess, of material. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, I go to that folder that I accidentally put the STL into. So I'll go, I'll save this as a project first, save as. Okay, so uh, now what I'll do is uh, get the SD card off the machine, and I will transfer the file. So I'll do that in just a moment. Taking the wrong window. Let me just move this little window out of the way. Okay. Floor beam one. I can remove this one. the one I want to remove. Neat. Okay, now I'm going to take the, the G code file, drag it, copy here. Okay. And I'm going to just close that window, take out the SD card. So I can see the video. So other little things that I am doing, I'm going to have to do also little changes is I'm going to have to change this room. Computer, turn on figure display. Okay. And okay, so uh Print engine being one dash one. This one, print. So it's going to do its thing. Touch screens, you know. So I use one of these little pen things that has like a little rubber foamy piece. I don't know where I cut this pen from, but I like those ballpoint pens that has a, a little rubber thing. I got a cross pen that has it, and it's very, very useful, especially when you go to a, a store or somewhere, you know, you don't want to touch the pad with your finger, you just press those things, or when they ask you to sign their 
a little screen uh, and uh, so I just take my little pen out and just go rather than try to finger do my name so yeah so other things I'm going to do I'm going to try to move this table further like this so you can get a better view of the figure collection uh, I'm going to have to see about moving the camera from here to maybe here so it faces this way also um maybe when the camera's here i can have the camera focus on this better you know so when i show this particular printer it won't be for so far so i'm going to try changing the layout of this that table in the back i, can, I gotta move all sorts of stuff out it's not junk okay it's um it's all useful stuff Oops, let me change something make an adjustment the speed i want to print very slowly the first layer and then i want to increase the full speed after so all that stuff over there is good stuff you know um I got tubes for the harpoon system there. I got uh, other items. It's just that some items are delicate, and I can't just store things around. I can't just put things in a box. And if I do put it into a box, it has to be, you know, padded and everything. So until I do something like that, it's just convenient to just put it there. You know, where do I put this? There. So it's going, it's going good. It's making the the first pass. Uh, it's doing what's called a skirt. So it's a little outline. Basically, it's priming the, the print. Okay, getting ready to change the speed to, to slow speed. So I gotta clear that table over there, because that's where I want to put the VSS. Okay, now it's doing really slow, and that's what I want right now. So that's basically everything on this video. Um, it's gonna be printing for the next, uh, instead of five hours, it's gonna be more like, um, more like six to seven hours and so I, I have to print six of these for the bottom of the floor so uh, let me I can actually show the picture uh, let me go to here, back JPEG. And I will uh, share this particular screen. So share screen, application window, photos, share. So this is, um, so these beams here, let me change the layout. Yeah. So these beams here are these that you see, you know, these angry ones. So um, I got it. So right now, what's what's going on in the printer there, which I'm printing extremely slow at the moment, are these middle beams. And so those middle beams to the wood
you know, they're just going to be like this. Those middle beams are going to be over here. They can't really see me. Um, so they'll be, over, they'll be over here. And um, so, you know, I need six of them. And, of course, you know, there's got to be a beam that joins. So that's going to be for my goal for this week with the VSS. After which, I'll, I'll be doing um, little greeble areas, greeble designs to kind of fill in the dead space in between. That's for this section. Um, I got to do the same thing again for the next section, next part. And then I have to do it again for the ceiling. Uh, so also, so once the beams start to get uh, printed, I'm going to do a laser cut for the side walls that angle up. So the walls with the, these beams. They're going to, it's going to have some, um, I guess you can see it better like this. It's going to have a, 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 basically a wall going across here. And then back here, this part is going to be left open for now. But back here is going to be another wall going up. So that's the, that's the main battle plan on the engine room. And that's just the engine room part itself. The areas that holds the, the thruster, thruster is going to be, I started to work on this a little bit yesterday. The thruster is going to be raised off of the, the wood just a little bit off the floor. It's going to have a beam to support that. And it's going to have like a frame of 3D printed stuff all around to make it look very greebly. And uh, that's going to go all around. And that's going to, you know, support a wall. It's going to go over here to support, to separate the, well, to keep in, the, in between the middle. And it's going to have a wall thing that's going to join to the outside walls as well. And, you know, in case you're curious, so why is, why is the light so, so harsh? It's not sunny outside. It's overcast. So anyways, um, put this on. And then, of course, one of the last things to do will be the, the thruster cylinder. And that's going to be uh, quite a bit of work. Mostly for the printer. But it'll be printed on that machine, so. Hopefully we'll be, we'll be able to see everything in progress. So, oh, if you're curious, on other parts I'll get into later, I got a bunch of, um, see it here, a bunch of uh, 3D printed beams and things. They are going to have magnets. So they have magnets right now. Nothing is really glued. So you'll have magnets able to support other magnet parts. This one's repelling. Oh, well, I know what they're doing. So anyway, got magnet. So, you know, of course, it'll be upside. This part is meant to be upside down. And, of course, that means I'm going to have to. But it's not this, this part is not for this. Okay. This part is for a different thing. So, um, but anyway, the poles. So, I, I'm getting these smaller items done. I need a whole bunch of these types of beams. So... This is a, a massive project just in doing the beams themselves. Okay, that's all I have to, to show everyone right now.
Um, it's a good stopping point here. And uh, uh, I guess if you really are curious about the other um, items, you know, these are other pictures. These are the beams being worked on. I have to print this beam next after this beam gets done. And so these are just, this, these are older pictures, but, you know, these are things for, for the engine. So, okay. Let's see. So, thanks everyone for watching. I'm going to close the video now and uh, uh, probably work on some laser cutting. Okay, thanks everyone for, for stopping by and uh, talk to y'all later. All right, bye-bye.